Council of the House on Aging Senior Center, public session, and no one here, so we'll move on. For the approval of minutes of the April 10th meeting plus the executive meeting, I hear a motion that they be accepted. I make a motion. Anybody uh, have any questions or corrections? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I have a correction on um, the actual board minutes that under approval of minutes from the previous meeting, it's James Spencer, not James Spender. Oh. <laughs> so, and that's just a typo. Yeah. Right. Anyone else have any corrections or hearing none? All in favor of they be approved? Approved. All right. All right. Aye. Aye. Who seconded? Uh, probably. Probably. Yeah. Nobody opposed. They are accepted. Let's we'll start with the staff report. Well, we have to do the executive session. Do that in the summer. The executive session. Uh, oh, did you include it? Yeah, okay. I you would. Okay. I apologize. Okay. Okay. And the staff report, Crystal, you're on. Hi everybody, I'm Crystal, Cody Sozer, Assistant Director, Volunteer Coordinator, and everybody knows that, right? <laughs> no. You don't know me, it's your first meeting, no, I'm just kidding, it's your second meeting. I haven't seen you here before. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, a program that the Senior Center um, started up in conjunction with Deals and Steals. It was in March, was the first monthly distribution. It's the Northampton Senior Center um, Supplemental Nutrition Program, and it's a bi-monthly distribution. The first Friday and the third Friday of every month, um, we distribute um, boxes of non-perishables that are given to us through Deals and Seals to qualified seniors in Northampton. Um, they apply for the program, and how the application process works is it asks for the number of, in your household. Um, I had applications and eligibility requirements that I printed out for you, but I got into something else, so those were in the printer, and I'll grab them later. <laughs> um, so basically, it goes by all of your household income that's coming in, and then all of your expenses that are going out. And um, we qualify applicants based on those who have less than $200 a month available to them to purchase food and items like that. So w the first month, we had six people approved for the program. So in March, there were six people. Now for our June distributions, we have 16 people approved for the program. So it's growing quickly. Um, Deals and Steals said that they have the ability to um, have about between 20 and 50 people approved for the program. So if we get to the point um, where we have that many people participating, we may kind of split the distribution where they get it on the, one gets it on the first Friday and the other gets it, the other group will get it on the third Friday. Um, Patty and I are still in discussion with Deals and Steals about how we're gonna work that, because um, it is growing rather quickly, um, the program. There are a lot of people that are eligible. Um, and, we go by their income and we add the public benefits that they receive for food assistance back in so that because what it is it's designed to help people who don't who may be getting food stamps but it's still not enough they still are in either the negative or they have less than two hundred dollars a month in available income to help supplement their food expenses did you have a question Barbara? no i I find two hundred dollars a month just, you know, so little. Minimum. Minimum. Yeah. And having seen the boxes of the, I was so impressed. Yeah. I couldn't believe what was in there. They're very substantial. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason why, when we worked with Deals and Steals, um, the person, their manager, was very concerned about. Um, there's. Unfortunately, people that receive public benefits who manipulate the system and working at Deals and Seals, she has seen this where people will come in with their food stamp benefits and try to sell those benefits to other people who want to use them. So 
we usually, this, this program is not federally or state subsidized, so somebody who may be over income for food stamps could still qualify for this program based on the fact that they have expenses going out for medical care, for prescriptions, for housing repairs, things like that. Um, like we have a person that's in Florence who is receives $40 a month in food stamp benefits, okay? And she qualifies for this program because she's actually negative on, on her monthly expenses. She is negative. She doesn't have any additional income. So if something was to happen in her household, she doesn't have money to get from anywhere. Um, and the, But based on the income criteria for the food stamp program, the brown bag pro program, there's a lot of people who are just missing it. And those are the people that Deals and Steals really wanted to be able to help because these are the people that aren't receiving the help. And unfortunately, some of the people that are receiving the help are manipulating the programs to be able to have you know, more cash or whatever they're getting for these food stamp benefits that they're trying to sell. So that was something that was brought to Patty and my attention about you know, where they really wanted to focus this extra help. And we were in agreement, and that's how we designed the applications. And I will definitely have them to pass out to you so you guys all can have a look at them. And they're also at the reception desk. So if you know anybody who's interested, um, I emailed the application to the Survival Center and let them know um, if they have anybody that goes there that would be interested in applying to please you know, give out the application. And do you investigate whether the, the applications they fill out are truthful? And yes. Yeah. yeah, they're asked to sign the app. The applications say that um, whatever we ask for, um, is, that they have to come over, they have to be able to support what they're telling us. Like for instance, an example, we had somebody who said that they spend over four hundred dollars a month on supplements. They're into like natural remedies and things like this stuff, stuff that's not covered by health insurance. And um, the person, you know, was able to provide me with receipts that showed that for this. Aloe vera, they had an ulcer and they treated it with aloe vera juice and that they, you know, they were providing me with all these different um, receipts to prove that their expenses were valid. So people that apply to the program, if there's anything that's kind of not cut and dry like mortgage, um, property taxes, water and sewer bill, insurance, things like, you know, things like that. We certainly investigate the issues, yeah. This is basically to catch people who are in that zone of not quite poor enough to get all the benefits they need, but nevertheless they don't have they the income. Right, and we do have people on the program that are receiving some public oh, yeah. benefits, but it's like not they, enough. it's not enough. And what you know, they're utilizing brown bread. They're utilizing their survival well, center. A friend of mine has gone from she went from 160 to 16 dollars on the. On the Wow. Yeah, uh, and that's how. And I don't know, and she didn't still know <laughs> why, but uh, the things changed. Right. And but her income still isn't very high. Right. So. And it. Yeah, there's a lot of people like that. And it does. In this program, we've had wonderful feedback from the participants on you know how the the food is very very healthy and that you know they haven't been able to eat this good in a long time. Yeah. So I, to me, that's you know showing nice. that. The program is, is well, we working. did look at the box that was in the yeah. kitchen, and yeah. it Woo! was not throwaway junk food. Or no. somebody just getting rid of stuff. It, yeah, it yeah. really quality stuff. Yeah. Like what? What? Quinoa. They do quinoa, ag quinoa, agave, um, black beans. It's um, it's a lot of gluten-free, gluten-free products. Yeah. Um, yeah, like they have rice pasta. Um, everything that they that they are providing people with is. You know, whole grain, gluten-free, organic. Um, it's stuff that they sell in Deals and Steals, and it's you know, it's really. And they always send a snack too, like a special they treat. Didn't candy bars. Yeah, they had. Oh, a, what kind? Well, they were. Um, you know, what, soybeans like adamame. They were roasted soybean chocolate bars. So it was like a chocolate bar, but it had um, roasted soybeans in it. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was dark chocolate. Yeah. And, they had, yeah. and, and yeah. so the program is yeah. for people 60 and older. Yeah. It's not for um, you know people is who are lost. Yes. Yeah. It's Northampton seniors yeah. ages 60 and older. Yeah. And, and one thing that yeah. we had done because people were just coming in and sort of 
quickly filling out the application, we ended up putting a cover letter on it that they need to read it because people who weren't even 60, I mean, the directions were in the application. <clears throat> we're just filling it out to fill it out to get the, um, the uh, Deals and Steals boxes yeah. of food. So the letter, and again, it was, you know, Crystal was then having to contact people to say, you know, oh, you're not old enough. So the, the letter, at least, read this first before you start filling out the application. Yeah, and a lot of people were, um, they assumed just because they lived in subsidized housing or on Medicaid mass health received food stamps that they would automatically qualify. And when they received the letter saying, well, according to the income that you the information you've provided to us, you have an additional $400 a month to supplement your expenses for food and necessities. They were like, oh, but I get food stamps. I get but brown bags. But so they, yeah, know, they I mean, didn't um, understand that this program is to help those who are, I mean, there are programs that are, that are set up to help you. The food stamp program, the brown bag program, the survival center program, but this program is set up to help those who really, their expenses outweigh their income. They leave them with very, very little to work with at the end of the month. Um, and that's the way it was designed. Um, so if you know anybody who you think falls into that category, is give us their name and we'll contact them uh, to see if they would like to participate. Because as much advertising as we do about this, there are people who still don't know. Word of mouth like, is the only way to go with this one. Yeah. yeah. You want to really get the people who need it the most. And we've changed Bill, our handyman, we changed his schedule so that he's here for the distribution so that if somebody was a homebound senior who doesn't oh, utilize public transportation or they do but it's only PVTA to medical appointments, oh. then we can have Bill bring the bag to the people's houses. So if somebody that you know, you're like, oh, person's like, I never go to the senior center. There's no way that I'm going to get down there because it is a hefty box of food. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it, we do have the ability, but it has to be a case by case basis. And we are definitely making a phone call when people ask for it to be delivered. It's case by case, and we're making a phone call and going through the criteria for it to be able to. Fall. It's a lot of work for you people. Do a lot of well, and, and the thing is, is that we would we would like to be we want to be able to provide this service because these are the people that are falling through the cracks. They're the ones that don't qualify for all the extra help programs because they're a little bit over income. They're the dollar over people or the five dollar over people, you know. And it's really about deals and seals. Really wants to help the people that need it. Um, they don't want to help people that are selling their food stamps. <laughs> they want to help the people who really need the program, um, who need the assistance. People, it's all hard. Not people do it. Yeah. What is it called? It's called the Northampton Senior Center Nutritional Outreach Program. Okay. Yeah. So a nutritional outreach program. <laughs> um, I get food stamps, so, and I go to the supermarket. When I check out, they just say for food, and I could have Christmas cards. Or no. Yeah, the food stamps only pay for food. Yeah. So um, I don't the computer and the cash register will separate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if stuff. you have four hundred dollars yeah. in food stamps, then you spend you know two hundred dollars at the grocery store, but only a hundred of it is on food, then it's only going to take a hundred dollars off of that EBT card yeah. for the supplement. And the clerk will sell you another hundred and so on. Yeah. If you bought uh, yeah. alcohol or yeah. there's a lot of different so, things you can't buy. Yeah, it only covers, um, yeah. in some states it does cover things like household necessities, but not in Massachusetts it's only food. Yeah. Um, you know the law now, don't you? Hmm? You know the law now. <laughs> I don't know, I was a social worker somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now for the scary part, how many of these people do we have now? Uh, we have 16 people that are on the program right now. So it went from 6 to 16 from March until June. Um, so it is, we do get many applications. Um, I've received probably over 100 applications, but not everybody qualifies. No, right. um, and you got to go through all that. Work. Yeah, so it's just basically, um, once I give you the applications, you'll flip them over and see that I do, like, just, it's math. You put, you put the income, you put the food stamps, you have the equation of all the deductions that they list as deductions. And a lot of people um, 
don't even fill out all the deductions. And you know, when I send them the letter saying that you don't qualify, they're like, well, I only have five dollars a month to my name. And I said, well, prove it. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. that's your job. I mean, I'm not here. You're to, not a I can't. I can't be. And um, you know, so we've had a lot of people who've submitted more than one application. Um, and we have people who qualify for the program because they have temporary costs, like um, maybe some court cost, or they've had cancer treatment, and now they're paying the hospital two hundred dollars a month to try to make up for those, you know, the treatments that they had. So they're qual they'll qualify for like a short term basis for the program. And um, so that it can be like for a short term, they can qualify for short term. Right. If the only not. reason that they qualify for the program is because they have this incurred expense, um, then when that expense is no longer there, if they're over income for the program, then the program. So who, who checks that? Have that? I do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I have some volunteers um, that, you know, have that, that will help me to, because I have everything in, in draft form as far as letters, so all you have to do is type the person's name. Like I have approval letters, I have denial letters, I have them in Spanish and English. So all you have to do is really type the person's information based on what the information that I provide to the volunteers. So if it's all on the computer, it's in a file. Yeah. So I'm not trying to take on the world, <laughs> even though it seems that way. All the time. We're just trying to help people, you know. So we're always willing to do, you know, this agency, as you guys know, is always willing to go above and beyond to help people. That's what you know. It's part of our mission statement and. That's one of the things that I love about it. So, hey, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I love it. On behalf of those people that maybe don't know exactly. thank you. <laughs> and one of um, the programs that we've set up, as you guys probably know, is our Older Americans Month presentations. Um, and I was in charge of doing two different programs. Um, one is the End of Life Decisions in Care with Dr. Jeffrey Zessiger. Oh yeah. Um, and he's in charge of the Palliative Care Department at Coley Hospital. And he's going to be coming here on Tuesday, May 20th for an evening session. And he's going to be um, coming with a team. He has a nurse, a chaplain, as well as some people that are part of um, kind of their board, that they're part of the community. Um, they kind of have, they have experience using this service. Um, and palliative care assists patients with symptom management while providing both support um, for the family and the patients during times of serious illness. So it's not like hospice because you can go off of palliative care. Um, you can, anybody can be, any age can be on palliative care. It's really about comfort, providing you with comfort while you have a serious, it could be terminal, it doesn't necessarily need to be terminal. And he's also going to discuss the MOLST form, which is Medical Orders for Life Sustaining Treatment. Um, and that's where you tell the hospital um, if you want a respirator or what you, what, yeah. you know, if you want a DNR. Um, and the MOLST form um, is new, it just came out about a year ago. So because it's new and it has different technical languages, uh, language regarding the different aspects of the form. They've been doing a lot of um, in-services explaining what it means. Because when people are talking about end-of-life decisions, the last thing they want to do is not interpret some wording correctly. <laughs> so is that saying the old form is no good anymore? Correct. Ooh. Yeah. Because nobody knows that. Um, if you have like a healthcare, this is, this is like a healthcare proxy, yeah. um, something like that, then generally your you your attorney would fix things for you. Um, but if Thanks you to went to Cooley Dickinson Hospital two years ago for a surgery and you filled out the healthcare proxy and then you get brought in on an ambulance, if um, they're not going to utilize that healthcare proxy that you filled out two years ago, even though they have one on file for you. Like when I have surgery at Clinton Hospital, they usually have you fill out a healthcare proxy like right there before you go in, just so they have something current on file. So everybody um, should definitely have a most form. So if you're interested in learning more about that form, then you should go to see Jeff Dr. Jeffrey Zessiger on the 20th at 530 <laughs> at the Senior Center, 67 Pine Street, North Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody 
Everybody has one of these flyers, and we have yeah. these out in the senior center as well. Yeah. I handed these out at city council meeting. Okay. Um, so uh, there's a lot of events that we always try to put on in May to um, boost what seniors should have. That ice cream social date, if it's July 8th, it's on a Tuesday as opposed to Wednesday. Yeah. Is it your, or if you is it your birthday? You, you know the date? No, I just looked it up. The date's wrong. The date's wrong. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. that corrected. So what's the date? Tuesday. It's actually Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Oh, it's going to be Tuesday the 8th. No. Get that correct? As opposed to Wednesday, it's a Tuesday. All right, so does anybody have any questions for me? And I will definitely get you all a copy of that application so you have it, so you have the information to be able to spread to anybody that you know that might qualify. Yeah, if you know anybody, let us know so that we can uh, contact them so we can get them enrolled if they qualify. Do they have to have an address? Uh, yeah. Can't be a street person. Maybe they need it, or maybe so I, think, I think we can they talk about that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people with dispensers. <laughs> <laughs> now, but yeah. we do have a large uh, population yeah, well, of homeless. A lot, yeah, a lot of the vets that are homeless could fall to that group, and they could probably. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of the food that's provided needs to be cooked. Well, they had their campfires and blah, yeah. blah, blah, but mm -hmm. even still, you know, that's, that's the issue I find with a lot of the guys that I talk to, yeah. is they're off the street, you know, they're all yeah. veterans and they're off the street and they don't have a home. Yeah, if they're 60 or older, and I mean, if they're 60 or older, it asks for an address, but most mostly it's just to prove that they're a Northampton senior. Um, it doesn't mean that they actually have to have an address that they live at. If they have a P.O. box or... I'll talk to you about yeah. one of them there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for all you're doing. Thank you guys for helping me out. We'll move on to finances, the FY14 and the Yep, So FY14 is the budget that we're in currently. And um, as I say, at this point of the year <clears throat> in the budget, the, um, the personal services, we owe money there because money has to get transferred. And then we still have money left in our ordinary maintenance. Uh, but we have you know, some bills that haven't been paid yet. So that is what the city gives us for our budget versus um, our other accounts that we also draw off of. So there's... Uh, you know, by the end of the fiscal year, we're free and clear with the city because we transfer monies from the revolving accounts and from our grant accounts to pay for what we were obligated in our budget to pay for. Okay, any, any questions? Questions on that? 14? Mm -hmm. yeah. Continue with the 15 budget? Thank you. Um, so, the next budget for FY15, um, I had passed out copies of the budget uh, that came from the mayor's office, uh, is how it's getting presented to city council. I haven't heard yet when um, departments are going to be appearing before city council. So when I find that out, I'll let you know that those haven't been scheduled yet. And probably as I say it, it tomorrow will get scheduled. scheduled. So I'll let everybody know, and if you want to attend, I know a number of you attended last year. So, um, yeah, so you never know what kind of questions you're going to get asked. And, and you know, you're there to help. Talk Support about you. The part of and we help. So, after that, any more questions on either uh, 14 or 15? Well, one of the first things is Tommy Young, our travel coordinator, has resigned. Um, she had really organized a lot of trips and we were moving forward with a number of them um, by signing contracts, but it's my understanding she resigned because of having to deal with the bid process. 
So um, right now we will be looking for a travel coordinator and any of the trips that had already been scheduled are on hold or they aren't going to happen. So we're starting from square one again. But we, is this a voluntary position again? It is. It's a volunteer position. Um, and you know, she put a lot of effort into it. And why did she resign? I didn't hear it. Because of the bid process, now that the council on managing. Yes, and that's a pain. Mm -hmm. I know. It's workable. It's a lot of extra work. Um, I mean, with a Hawaii trip, which um, you have to put in a, a, a bid sheet or, you know, an ad into at least one newspaper. So I was working with Joe Cook, the procurement officer, getting that correct. And, and then she resigned, so that's just getting pulled. It's not going to happen. So any of the trips that you might have been planning for, um, they aren't, they aren't going to get scheduled. So we're looking for a new coordinator. But we do thank her for what she did for us. Um, many of you attended our volunteer recognition breakfast. This year we did a breakfast instead of um, an evening meal. Um, and Crystal, as a volunteer coordinator, did a, a bulk of the work for that. And I would say, in my own opinion, it was a very nice event. It had a great flow to it, wonderful entertainment. I think we were happy that the mayor came and he presented the proclamation for National um, Volunteer Month. And I would like to say thank you to um, staff who contributed door prizes for the event. Uh, and also, we really couldn't have had this if Dr. Colby, our foot doctor here at the Senior Center and Elder Vision Friends um, Association uh, didn't provide some funding. And then a portion of it came from our, our own um, budget, our own uh, funds. And um, so on behalf of the board, um, Phil and Elaine, Phil Perot and Elaine McClellan were honored and um, there were there was a plant given to them and there was a citation from the mayor's office and both Mike Hearn and Mayor Narkowitz did the presentation so they were honored for their years of service and we I can't tell you what the whole event cost yet because we're waiting for our invoice from Seth Pye's catering but um, it's you know it's delicious. delicious oh thank you very yeah. good um, and so we'll let you know at the next board meeting what the whole event cost a lot of positive comments at the table by that. Yes. Everybody was really happy. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoyable. Very nice. Um, the girls were outstanding. Yeah, the entertainment. The girls, the young women were great. really good. Yeah. Very, 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 very engaging, got involved with the audience. Yeah, yeah, and just just very, they had a lot of fun. Very nice. Yeah. Fun. Unbelievable yeah. talent. Yeah. 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 And they saw it a lot. Oh. I would strongly suggest we try to get those for other events that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they got four. Happens. They got 400 young women and guys. Yeah, I'm sure that there's always a couple that are available. Oh, that'd be great yeah. for an afternoon concert, yeah, yeah. fundraising concert, yeah. 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 And tomorrow there'll be pictures of, of the event on um, um, a poster up front. Uh, Chris and I attended two city council meetings on April 17th. We went to talk about National Volunteer Month and what it means for the senior center, the number of volunteer hours. The, what the contribution to the city is in dollars and cents based on $27.43 per person. Um, and then on May 1st, we went to the city council meeting to talk about Older Americans Month. And we brought Mary Lestowski um, because one of the things we're going to start doing is bringing a volunteer every so often to city council to introduce them as you know, oh, here's nice. somebody who's at the senior center. So Mary was our first uh, oh, candidate. Very nice, Mary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the mayor presented us with our uh, Older Americans Month proclamation, which is uh, posted in the lobby, but it's also on the back of your flyer. It also was in our last insert. Oh, yeah. So we were glad to get that. Um, we had Janice Beadle here, who is a writer, a publisher, and a graphic artist, and does a number of um, things with um, journalism. And one of the meetings, Joanne and I met with her because it was a review of the 
chronicle and how we can switch it around, how do you make it a better read, what do you, just how you really uh, format a, a newspaper. And then we had two workshops for all staff who are involved with writing for the paper, uh, how, to, how to write articles better, the who, what, why, and when, all of those types of things, and uh, formatting. So the, both sessions that everybody had with uh, Janice, and I think everybody gained a lot so that you'll see some changes with the, the paper as an improvement and enhancement to it. Uh, five College Learning and Retirement, their last series was uh, April 25th. Um, it, was, it really worked out well for us. This year we did provide um, beverages for them, which they were charged for. And they had some very informative sessions with a lot of people who were in attendance. So um, I, I'm sure they'll be back next year. Um, I went to a meeting at Highland Valley Elder Services on April 14th, um, and there was discussion about the upcoming grant process, though most of the discussion really was around the agencies who were there and what we were currently doing. Um, but here at the Senior Center, we'll apply for grant in their next cycle um, for uh, translation of NCOA informational materials in Spanish. Uh, probably transportation in the companion program again, although we'll discuss it as a staff, but um, you know, we'll, we'll get our grants in to see what we might end up with. Group Sing, um, you know, continues. They probably will not be during the uh, summer, and they've written another grant uh, in conjunction with us so that Group Sing can continue, and that grant is through the Northampton Arts Council. This would be the third year if we actually did get it. Um, currently, we have 59 vendors for the health and safety fair, so that's oh. kind of running and normal, and we can still accept more. So next week, and even probably like two days before, we'll get people who want to um, come. So we have a lot of returning um, vendors. We also have a lot of new people, which I think always keeps it fresh um, when you're doing it. Uh, and Joanne and I are working on the booklet that we um, have paid ads in, and then um, a lot of information. So that will be available for everybody. Um, our open house is May 18th, and it's 1 to 3. I hope um, the board will come and um, participate. We're going to be doing tours. Um, there'll be exhibits. Uh, Jim, as the uh, instructor for photography and writing, will this will be set up as an exhibit area for that. Uh, we'll have in the activity room needle workshop, uh, needle needle workshop and the sewing group and then some people who just have other things that they've made will have those in the activity room. We have entertainment in the great room uh, and we'll have refreshments. So there's a lot going on and it's an opportunity for the public to come in and see the senior center um, in an informal way uh, and be able to talk to people who are here on staff and who are volunteers and um, board members. So we hope the public really comes and takes advantage of seeing what the senior center is like. Can we get some name tags for board members yes. and volunteers before that day? You suppose if we could put them on this board member on a, a different color or something? Or? Yes, we can. Yep. So if you know of a volunteer coming, Jim, for your group, yep. um, if you can let us know. I'll have the numbers know. like before okay. the end of the week, next week. Okay, so name tags for board and volunteers for you. Okay, fine, good idea. That's um, everything that I have for today. Well, at least in my report. Questions on the Spanish report? Questions? Uh, move on to building and grounds report, Betty. Yep. Just a couple things. Um, we're going to have mulch delivered, um, and our gardener will put that out. And, um, I was guaranteed that the mulch will be gone by the time we have the health and safety fair because we need that parking space. Yeah. <laughs> and just so you know, parking is available over at World War II Club. Um, right, right. They have agreed to let us use that. Um, the Netto Meditation oh, Garden yeah. um, next week, Kevin and um, Frank Netto will be here, and they're going to paint out when you take a can of spray paint and you outline where the garden's going to be and if anybody's interested in seeing that they'll be here next Tuesday at 8 30. Uh, and then they anticipate starting to get it um, constructed and then there's going to be a dedication 
June 21st in the morning. I, I'm not sure about the time yet, but um, if you plan on June. What kind of day is that? Yeah. What time? Oh, I don't, that I don't know. It'll what, be in the morning. What's, what's the day of the week? It's a Saturday. Saturday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, there's shred day here too, but I, that, it's mom interfere with that. Um, so oh, that's nice. happening. Uh, so that's really all I have for buildings and grounds. Now this garden is going to be at the end of the building. Yeah, it's at the end of where social day is. Yeah. And you see that retention pond right in that area there. Okay. And one of the things that's going to happen is they're going to put in brick, <coughs> which um, will eventually sell it. You can have things engraved on it. Oh. So that, that's still in the works. We don't know what the cost would be or how long would that work. A member of the bricks, correct, for that word. I said building and grounds. Anybody have anything to say on buildings and grounds? I see how the gardener is working out there again. He's been out there for yeah, quite oh, hard. Yeah. Well, he's a happy guy out there doing he his thing, but he it. just yeah, loves he it. He's so he knowledgeable. He does love it. Good. <coughs> Old business, Penny? Yeah, so policy and rental fees for the use of the senior center. Um, last month, um, Jim, on behalf of Jim and Barbara, presented um, an increase to the rentals of 30%. So um, you have a packet. It says fee schedule for use of space at Northampton Senior Center. And so what the prices that we had for fees, I increased those by... 30%. So what you're seeing is what the cost would be for general programming rooms, which would be a room like this. If somebody wanted to use it during normal business hours, it would be the $39 an hour. And then hours that are not part of the business hours would be 52 hours. Um, then the great room, there's two types of meetings. One is just sort of audience style, you know, you're listening to a speaker. So with the 30% increase, it would be $130, and a social type event um, is $163. So it could be like a dance, it could be a annual yeah. meeting, dinner, um, but whenever food is served in there, the cost of that room is more um, because of the additional. On the general programming, all of the other hours, $52 an hour, does that include a monitor, or is the monitor separate? The monitor comes out of that dollar amount. Okay, so the monitor fee is always included in it. And, it, and again, and it says in here too, the monitor, if it's a monitor, a staff person, or an authorized um, attendant in the building, whoever's using the building pays from the, de the time that door gets open for them to use it to the end, the last person out. So they could say that it ends at 8 o'clock. And they're really not out of there till 8:30, but they get billed till 8:30 right. because of whoever's here is getting paid right. up to that time. Right. right. And so far, that has not been an issue. So, um, the kitchen uh, is it's a flat fee just to use the kitchen of $75. And now, after um, an experience with a rental in there, and this follows um, somewhat what the school department does that. There's a kitchen supervisor that has to be on duty, and that would be at $15 an hour. The kitchen supervisor is available for providing directions on use of kitchen equipment and not for hands-on work at the event. It means they're not in there to do the dishwasher for them. They will be instructed on how to use the dishwasher. But the person that's the, um, so supervisor. the supervisor should know how to run that kitchen. Absolutely. Yeah. How to use the stoves? How to use the stoves? Where the bowls are? Yeah. Put the fires out. And what can be yeah. used? What can't be used? Yeah. And yeah. stuff like that. Because that that and I and that comes from experience with how things happen in the kitchen. Um, Just like home. when there's um, that's right. Don't want the kids in the kitchen without a supervisor, right? Um, and the kitchen's only available when the dining room or great room is used. The kitchen must be left in the exact condition as found. And that's because some people want to, and I'll just use this as an example, they want to do their canning and they want to use our kitchen because you can do more in our kitchen. But we don't rent out the kitchen for that purpose. Okay. 
I noticed the bistro isn't on here. Is there a reason for that? That's the dining room. Is that the dining yeah. room? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, if a caterer is used, he or she must be on the approved list of licensed uh, caterers and file with us a certificate of insurance 30 days prior to using the senior center. Uh, there is no freezer available because I don't like having the walk-in open because then they have access to everything that's in there and things have been taken. They go through the refrigerator also? We no, in the kitchen they can use that refrigerator. I, I usually... I mean the walk-in refrigerator. No. No. That, that's all one part. It's all one part and there's no access to that that's at all. The refrigerator in the kitchen is what somebody could People use and I usually clear that out uh, yeah. for them to use fully. Uh, for large group programs, <coughs> excuse me, especially when food is served and trash is generated, there will be a flat fee of $25 or they remove their own trash. And a lot of them do do that. They take their trash with them. Um, do you have a list of the caterers that you accept? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's in my head. Yeah. I'm sure I had it written at one point, but, and, um, you know, they have to, it can't be, like, Barbara decides that she knows how to do good strawberry shortcake and <laughs> thinks that now she wants to, you know, offer that. Um, she's not a really licensed caterer. caterer. And a lot of this comes from looking at what Luke Park does, what the school department does, what Smith Vocational does. So it's a combination of taking, you know, what works for us. Um, and caterers are uh, required to move their own trash, and if the caterer doesn't remove their own trash, then the person would be uh, charged for it. Um, other fees and policies. Fees are billed from arrival time to departure time, which is the last person out of the building. Your event may require a custodian, which is at the applicant's cost. Your event may require you to secure an insurance waiver, which is to be made available at least two weeks prior to the date. Um, the date of the event. All events require a staff member, building monitor, or a trained attendant. That means that nobody just willy-nilly can be running this building. And that's, you know, a lot of this stuff's just been in, in process the whole time. It's, you know, a lot of this is not new. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I'm a little slow here. Is the dining room considered the general programming room or the break room? The great room is general. Pro the great room is really the only big room. Okay, for so general, summer, general programming is every other. If it's the kitchen, then it's the, the, the general programming. I have the kitchen, but the dining room is the general programming. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, people have um, like the, having uh, uh, trying to think what group was here. Um, they did the social day activity room, classroom and uh, the library, and it was on a Saturday. So that those were all um, what we would call general okay. programming. Okay. And Did somebody uh, mention in our no serve alcohol beverages, who goes for the permit? They do. They yeah, do. There, and there's a thing in here when we get to it, but they, they in the application. And who makes but, a drink to have a good time? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Uh, <laughs> No tape, nail staples, or tacks may be used to hang items up in the senior center. We've seen it all. Um, okay, then other equipment rental fees. Ice, no, uh, the cost is based on how much they want. This, to use the screen in the great room, it's $10, but if it's one of the other portable screens, it's $10. The projector in the great room uh, is $35 if they want to use that and they have to attend a training. And then if you remember several months ago, if it takes longer than a half hour, they have to pay a fee for that additional time. Um, and we do get a deposit for that. But there's a whole separate sheet just on the um, projector. And then any other requests, cost based on the item or the uh, equipment being requested. Because sometimes it really does not stop. Um, you are responsible for your own extension cords, laptop, paper products, tablecloths, serving spoons, dishes, coffee pots, etc. Because the dishes, glassware, um, silverware is not going to be used any longer by any outside group that they would have to rent that from somebody. And that's a precautionary um, 
situation for us because we need what we need and we can't keep replacing things. People walk off. And you know, as I mentioned, the four coffee pots that got um, submerged in water that were no longer functional, or they could be if somebody wanted to plug them in and get electrocuted. Uh, so, you know, I think we have to be aware. Yeah. And I will say sometimes it's very hard to say to somebody, I'm sorry, you can't use that. That's right. not available. Because sure. they really think everything is, is for them. Um, and again, you know, I really point out to people that this building is, is, is for seniors. We plan things and do programming and provide services first. That's why we're here. Because people do get disappointed that, you know, well, why can't I be in there? Yeah. You know? Like we have a program in every room, there's nowhere for you to be. So, um, a deposit of 150 must accompany the request for use of the great room. Make checks payable to Northampton Council Aging. Uh, remaining balance is due at the completion of the day of the event. And, and many times I get it in advance, um, and then they would be billed um, afterwards. And so there have been a few situations where they are billed afterwards for additional issues. Um, additional fees may be assessed based on the space usage as stated in the application um, and additional fees can be assessed if damage has occurred and then the NCOA director determines appropriate use of the building and has final approval for usage at the senior center. So most of this other than the fee structure and a few other things about um, putting in specifics about don't tape, nail any of that. Uh, but I will say, you know, despite situations for problems that we've had, really, um, it, it's wonderful having people in our building, using our space, um, and I'm going to say that 99% of the people really appreciate that the senior center is available for them, and that um, it, it is a gorgeous building, and that, you know, we can say that City Council, the Mayor, the board and everybody who was involved with this building um, did a fantastic job. And we hear compliments every single day about this building from people who come in, especially for the first time. Yeah. It is a nice building. Penny, and your other fees and policies where you mentioned no tape, no staples, et cetera, I maybe would suggest that have a say no fasteners of any type, such as, because I can see people. Pushing it to the limit and say, well, I used a push pin or I used a screw. And it doesn't say in your policy that screws aren't allowed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's taking it to the wow. extreme, I agree. But I, mean, I was thinking the same thing. I, I would just say, people do not fasten that. anything on the wall, period. So, so if you say no fasteners of any type, such sure. as, then you've covered yourself. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But now I can see somebody come with a thing. I just that. listed just an example rather than the final yeah. list. I think not, in, not inclusive. Yeah. So no fasteners of any type may be used. Right. Yeah. That covers you better. I think. Such yeah. as. Such as, and then okay. you get this list yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. We even had one of our artists that used like this mold putty yep. stuff. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. it makes the paint on the green mark. Oh, there's a green mark. And she, I said, we well, can't use any tape or anything like that. And she's like, oh, well, they use this in music. And I'm like, I'll ask the director. <laughs> well, how about it? Was it this one here? Because yeah. however she attached it to the back of the picture was a great idea. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. So it works very well. That believes the grease mark. It does, yeah. 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 But like you can wipe the grease mark off. It comes up early. You still got to scrub it. But yeah, right. Uh, okay, so that's no, the uh, increases with the fees that, um, you know, went up 30%. It's cost a living. <laughs> and we're still way under what their bills is charging. Okay. Yeah. Very, very, very easily. Yeah. So primarily, this is not a business. This is a um, convenience. We uh, offer uh, yes. excess space. Yeah, that that we're not using yeah, this. Yeah. 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 change. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to uh, Get these changes uh, in there. Somebody will make the motion, including the uh, uh, corrections. Uh, uh, I'll make the motion, except this. John said it. All the that we made. I'll second the motion. Second by Bob. And I think it's the addition of uh, John's ambassadors. Is there any further discussion on? Okay. So. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? Is it and then the 
the other thing that was attached is the application that people fill in um, to use the building. <coughs> and so um, about the alcohol, that uh, it's not only the alcohol, but if there's any city permit that's required, it's up to them to get it. Um, Oh um, yeah, the one thing that has to get added to this um, is that just to cover ourselves, that if there are any special requests or needs by somebody or group, let's just say the Girl Scouts of America are having an event here and they're renting the building because they're having a grandparents day. Um, so if somebody said, well, we want a oral interpreter, one of the things we had heard kind of both ways that yes, you, you, meaning us, pay for it or the group pays for it. So to be safe, we should have in this application that if there are any special needs, that it's up to that group to provide it. So if they needed... Um, provide and pay for it. Right, yeah. right. There's provide any requests for reasonable accommodations right. or interpreters um, at for your event that you're responsible for it. <laughs> yeah. well, because I can just imagine, you know, there's a lot of things that are put on by outside agencies that we get requests for oral translator or sign language interpreter and things like that. And if it's not technically a city event, then we can't ask the city to pay for it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that can get added to this, um, but if you look through it, you know, it does talk about, you know, you're hiring a caterer. It gives you initial information before you really start talking detail. And, you know, sometimes it's, you know, one or two conversations with whoever's applying, and they might come in once, and then sometimes it's many, many, many conversations um, and drop-ins um, for the, the building. So, and again, I, I'll just say that, you know, we're not in the business of being a rental agency, um, but we do rely on rentals for uh, part of our budget for the funding of what we try to do there. So. It's on middle income, and uh, we have it open and available to qualify our organization. Do you have any? need to see the first. Exactly. No, I'm fully, uh, no, I'm just looking at another one. It's also good advertisement for people to see the place and say, hey, Grandma and Grandpa, you know, our last week is yeah. a really nice place. You got to go down there. That's why I like having the building yeah. here. Exactly. Like that. yeah. Yeah. That's a good point, Bob, about having voting. I always wanted to have at least a fully location. We ended up getting two of them. Right. And, you know, it really benefits us yeah. Yeah. in many, many ways. It gets people in the building who may not have ever chosen to come in so they can go vote. Of course, you found out how the visibility is extremely uh, valuable. You've got to be known that you're here. You mention somebody that's in the senior center, they don't know about it. That's, that's a problem. And I think the senior center is a turn on for a lot of folks. Why? And for the younger people. No, for the no. older ones too. Oh, right. the older people. They can't I, think of it as like a. You know, I think we could for five weeks sit down and just talk about that and it just. It's been, it's been around, and I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, right. Or, I'm just saying that this conversation has been around for a long time. They should, they long they should time. have birthday parties. Like, what, are, what do we call seniors, and what do we call the place that they come to, meaning the senior center? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's some places seniors are 50. Yep. Yeah. I think I passed that up a few years ago. <laughs> it's an ongoing conversation. Mm. I'm still fascinated by the number of people who don't know what exists. Yeah, well, that's come. again why the, these are bad because more people understand we're here. Yep. And it's not just the community, it's actual professionals. Like people oh, yeah. will call me and say, oh, I, I want my insurance adjusters to volunteer for a day and do a project that they could do, you know, maybe help to feed the seniors or something. And I'm like, no, the seniors feed themselves. Feed themselves. <laughs> <laughs> what you're talking about. The and they have the part, you know. yeah. And these are like professionals. So, I mean, it's yeah. a misconception. That, that they, they must be seniors that are about 30. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody over 50 is in Okay, we'll move on then. Uh, we're still on their old business. Anything on that, Patty? I'm under old business. Anybody have anything on old business? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll move on to new business. I have two 
items. Okay. Um, one of them is Kathy Pekela Service resigned from the Highland Valley Elder Services uh, Board as well. So um, the board uh, could vote to accept her resignation. I'll make a motion. Okay, I'll accept your resignation. Uh, any discussion on her resignation from Highland Valley? No. I mean, she served there for a long time. She should get some sort of recognition from the board itself, I believe, yeah. that for her service for that long of a time. You mean from Highland Valley yeah. Elder Service? Yeah. Or? No, from us to her. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, true. That's good. Yeah, she's, she was on it long before I came. Let's just set that for 16, 16 a, 17 years, something wow. like that. Wow. Yeah. That. Yeah. That's good. Almost yeah. as old as me. And then that's putting, yes, and putting up with that for that length of time, believe me. It's, 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 Maybe we can do that at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll buy a volunteer for the uh, safety care. I already got you written down. Okay. <laughs> How about triad? Did anybody ever? I met in Crystal. I still have a checking account for triad. Well, hold on to it. Okay. Because we still need to get well, it. Well, I haven't signed it, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Gil. Bye, Gil. You didn't take a vote on that, though. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any votes? No. <laughs> it's accepted. Thank you all. Yeah. And thank her. You've got something yeah, else? One other you? thing. I passed out the code of conduct to everyone. And um, so I'd like to ask if you would um, change. Actually, two items now. One of them is highlighted. The other one came to me as. I was passing this out. Um, number one of our code of conduct it says enroll as a member of the senior center by completing a questionnaire, having a photo ID taken, and then <clears throat> being issued a scan card to my senior center. Um, I'd like to add the scan card is to be used each time a member enters the senior center. So it not only says they have to get one, but they have to use it. I understand in the photo that you have to use one to leave. Yeah, you have to check in and out. You check in and out? Yeah. Which is even more severe than this. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's one of them. And then if you go down to number seven, and so this one isn't already written in your um, number seven, but it says no panhandling in the building. I'd like to include no panhandling in the building or on senior center property because it does happen on the outside of the building. Has that happened? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's why I, I'm asking for it. Um, yes, somebody was being approached as they were coming in our main entrance. You can't um, think of everything, but eventually somebody will highlight it for you. All right, so those are the two uh, changes I would like to offer the board to uh, place into our code of conduct. Will somebody make a motion to uh, we And Barbara seconds it. Yep. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And then we just have all your the announcements. I don't have any comments. You don't have any comments. No. Does anyone have anything? Go ahead. See, if you hear, I'm going around just asking seniors all through Northampton what they think of the senior center. And Barbara's been involved in one of the discussions. <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody, it's, I'm doing it to make a report to the board by next month or post it with Patty. Uh, some of the answers I'm getting in question, people not knowing about it, what their complaints are, what their positives are. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to get a report with Patty and have this available for next week. So if anybody hears about it, that's, it's me doing it. So. When are you going to report on Probably next month. Next one. We should be able to get it through. I got I got most of the data already that I'm looking at. So where are you, where are you going to ask? If, if I see a old person like me, no, but I, I mean in the center of the city. I bet on the streets, on the on look a look park. I talk to people walking. What park walking is a good a good place to get them? Uh, restaurants, breakfast places. <laughs> 
places that I know people all the time and see people all the time that know me. Uh, just walking down the street, uh, I just I take a Tuesday afternoon and walk up and down Main Street. I see somebody with gray hair like me. I say, hey, my name is Jim Spencer. I'm a board member. Blah blah blah. What do you think of the you know senior center? And I got all kinds of responses. It gives us something as a board to work with. Yeah, visibility is extremely important. Okay, anybody else on new business? We'll move on to the, all of the announcements, Patty, if you want to yeah. make those. Yeah, so our next meeting uh, for the board is June 12th. Health and Safety Fair, May 22nd. Um, I believe we still need some volunteers for a few things. I need more runners. Um, that means serving, the, for taking, getting Don't menu. use the word runner. Runners scare people away. Yeah. Well, I was going to say servers, but then I got corrected with servers. So what it is, it's a runner slash server. And okay. while you're a runner, you don't physically run. But you transport the food from the kitchen out to the vendors. Transport. You're a transporter. Transport. The illegal kind of transporter. <laughs> So if you're interested, see Crystal. Um, and then today um, at 3 o'clock, probably for an hour if it lasts that long, there's an informational meeting about the uh, marijuana dispensary that's going to be down here on, on uh, Conn Street. They what actually mean, called me to see if we wanted somebody or persons from their organization, agency, business, to come over and um, speak to people. So it's been publicized, it's open to the public, so um, it be? it'll be in the great room. Is it our program? No. Well, actually it is our program, but that's okay. We'll just count numbers. <laughs> I, I don't have anything to now. Okay. So, okay, you want to any motions to adjourn? I'll make motions to adjourn. Okay. But my son is open. Barbara, Second. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.